you ready for mom tip? Let's go! Never kept up with the latest. Never tried to be the greatest. But let's be honest, yes, we want this. Hey everybody, it's Monty Mont here. We're not going to do our normal intro for our favorite scenes because, as you can see, this seat is empty. Uh, Tiff could not make the show. She was very heartbroken that she couldn't. Well, she had a family matter and she had to go out of town, so we're praying she gets back safely. So this is our favorite scenes podcast and, of course, on YouTube. And I'm really excited, you guys, for today's show. Now, Tiff is not here. But I got some real heavy hitters in the drama field, okay? These people are serious, okay, <laughs> about the drama game and, and Broadway and all of that stuff. So today on the panel, I first have Mr. Caleb. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me, man. Good, man. Have you ever been? Have you been on old shows? I've been on the. I've been on you, two you were on the old, old shows. shows. You've been on the old. I've been on show. two old shows, but now I'm the new. Now I'm the on the on the new new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the the new new is new for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, you um, of course are have helped me out with some some legal things as well for the show, so we are glad to have you um, of course, as man. well. Have now, been. and. No, let's 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 do the introductions first, and then of course next to him on his right is Miss Crystal. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for being on the show, Crystal. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's get into this now. You guys are both in the the law field. No. Oh, you. Oh, just no, you. No, no, no. Oh, okay. We met under in undergrad. Yeah. Oh, un yeah. okay, okay. Now the thing though is, you guys love checking out the plays. You guys 100%. know now if you're not from Las Vegas. The Smith Center is where a lot of these things happen because yeah. we don't, you know, wherever you have a performing arts center, that's kind of our thing. So you guys, how many of these have you checked out? Like, just you guys love plays. How many have you? You used? probably got more under your belt than me. Yeah, I think since it opened when they yeah. had Wicked, like back in 2012, 2013. Yeah, I think that's yeah. when it opened up. And then Caleb caught on. I caught, I caught, <laughs> I've been in the game for like two and a half years. You got so, it. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, they are serious about this. Now, let's not, I'm not going to discount myself. When I was in college way, way back, I took a, it was, it was, um, it wasn't even a performing arts class. It was, it was like a English class or something, but we could get extra credit if we volunteered at, at Michigan State at the Performing Arts Center. It was a Wharton Center. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah. And we had to volunteer to be ushers for plays. And mm -hmm. so I was like, all right, whatever, you know just for extra credit, I said, fine, I'll do it. And I had a ball. I think I saw Oklahoma. I saw uh, oh, yeah, that's a good Seven one. Wives, Seven Brothers, and Taming of the Shrew. And I just couldn't believe how talented these people were. I had never seen a real production like that before. You know, movies is one thing, but this yeah. was a whole different thing. a whole thing. different level. <laughs> whole different, I mean, the singing and the dancing, and I just was blown away. So that brings us today for why we are here. We're here for probably one of the biggest all-time uh, plays, productions, if you will, on Broadway throughout the country, maybe even throughout the world, and that is Hamilton. As you can see from Crystal's shirt, <laughs> she representing, right? So, um, and I'm going to say this, guys. So, it's been a buzz. I think it, started, it was 2016. I got my notes here. 2016 when it started out, and... Immediately, there was just this, man, yo, Hamilton. Have you heard? It's Hamilton, Hamilton. And, of course, it was on Broadway at the time. And I just was like, okay, cool. I didn't even understand what they were talking about. And then they're like, oh, man, well, it's, it's like this thing. And they're rapping, and it's Alexander Hamilton and all this stuff. <laughs> and, yeah. again, I'm sure – now, I'm going to ask you this. I'm sure there's been – somebody else has rapped on a Broadway production at some point, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't think it's been this prominent where no. like throughout the whole play, but you know, people have like some maybe like a, a couple rap verses. So, or so at the time, I just thought I'm like I'm sure somebody's done a rap. What's the big deal, you know? And I didn't even know really Alexander Hamilton. I'm like the the founding father guy. Yeah, you know, what they're talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean. And the buzz just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then. Um, I said, okay. And then you hear this name, Lin-Manuel Miranda, mm -hmm. and you just hear, and 
it got to the point. I said, man, people keep talking about this. This must be pretty good. Uh, what's when did you first hear? First of all, about Hamilton, like guys, we're gonna go through a lot of this. When did you first hear about it? I'll go. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, go um, ahead. I would say back in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, this kid and we were in student government together, mm -hmm. Caleb and I. Yeah. And this kid was playing Hamilton in, in his office, and I'm like, a rap musical <laughs> about a founding father, the guy on the ten dollar bill. Yeah. Like his name was Elon. Yeah, yeah, and I remember. My sister was like grilling. It was grilling this kid. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> And then people were coming to the office and like, yeah, you all are crazy listening to you, you young kids. You know, <laughs> what are you listening to? Right. But then it just, I was, I became obsessed. I'm like, what is this? I need to find out more. Who is Lin Manuel Miranda? What has he done? How is this on Broadway? Yeah. When is this coming on tour? <laughs> it's. Go ahead. I think uh, I think I remember that. Yeah. I remember we were in the student government offices, and I remember, and I was like. This sounds really corny and cheesy, and I was like, I'm not worried. And then I think I heard about it again in, I think it was 2017, I heard about uh, Hamilton, and it was really blown up. So uh, that's when I was like, okay, I might have to see about this. And then I think it came in 2018, and that's when I went to go see it here at the Smith Center, uh, and that's when I got hooked. But I think it was like 2017. Okay. And then, of course, by then, it wasn't the original cast when you saw it. Was no, no, no. It was the Philip, the Philip tour. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys don't know too, these these productions, they you know, if you're big enough, you can start on Broadway. Some of them start off Broadway, but they do this all the time. And then by the time they get to touring with it off of Broadway, it's usually well not always, but a lot of times it's not the same people that were on Broadway. But this cast was so famous all yeah. of a sudden, you know, with yeah. Lin Manuel Miranda. And you if you don't know the Broadway district in New York is just tons and tons of plays you know mm -hmm. what I mean I was not able when I went to New York was not able to go to a play I said man next time I go I definitely got to catch a play but there's so many out there that they're uh, doing and it is amazing but like you said the buzz for Hamilton I remember Wicked you know everybody's like oh Wicked yeah, is Wicked, great all that I remember I was like okay cool I'll maybe yeah. check it out but this Hamilton thing now be honest guys for me I got a little soured because, and it was just because, <laughs> here's the only reason why. Be, you know, it's funny that you say what you say, Crystal, because some guy was like, oh, man, this Hamilton thing, it's overrated, blah, it's not that, all that. And then another person was like, are you crazy? It's like the biggest thing ever. What are you saying? He was like, really? He said, you ever been at the stoplight and somebody was bumping Hamilton next to you? <laughs> and when he said it, I said, man, yeah. I was like, I ain't really heard anybody doing a sound check. So I kind of like, <laughs> it's whatever. So, of course, speed pass, 2020, COVID, all of these things. They taped one of the 2016, well, a couple actually. I think they taped two versions of mm -hmm. the 2016 performance with an audience and then one without. And they were going to put it on Disney Plus at some point, but because, you know, we're all, a lot of us just not going a lot of places and doing a whole lot of things and the theaters are closed a lot of times, they put it on Disney Plus. So I, and, and as soon as it got on Disney Plus, again, people are running up to me. You've got to watch <laughs> Hamilton. It's on Disney Plus. There's no reason not to. Yeah. And my only trepidation, because you, you guys have probably seen already, I hadn't seen it yet, was just like, will, will it translate well on screen? You know, as yeah. opposed to, because mm -hmm. I've seen these plays in person. And I'm like, man, you got to see it in person if you're going to see it. Yeah. And I didn't know if it was going to translate. Have you guys seen it on TV yet? Yeah, I yes. saw it. You saw it on TV. Okay, yeah. everybody's seen it on TV. So I'm going to say this now for the viewers, for everybody. It is unbelievable. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> so unbelievable. it is. It is. I mean, I came in kind of with my arms crossed. Like, it's <laughs> it's funny. I was, I turned it on. I started kind of multitasking. Yeah. And it probably oh, about no. 10 minutes and I said... Yeah, I said, wait a minute. This it's gonna is gonna grab your attention. I could not believe. Yeah. I mean, the music, not even just the rapping yet, just the scores. You yeah. know, I mean, Crystal, you might not know, I'm a musician, so the score is unbelievable. unbelievable. It's incredible. Then the lyrics with the raps, and mm -hmm. it, it is, it is, it is, it is crazy. So let's get okay. So I'm gonna get to my first question for um, for everybody. So. Let me ask you this. Oh, let me get my get my question list here. Like the fact that you felt like that watching it on television. Imagine you being inside the theater. Yeah. Oh man. And I that yes. I immediately got jealous of everybody that saw it for <laughs> real because I said, man, I wish I could have seen this in the theater just 
And, f- and for me, I mean, I know a lot of people are connected to the real actors, but I just would want to see it with any of the actors. Whoever did it, yeah. I'm yeah. sure they did it um, a big time way. So very quickly now, the because of this, of course, the soundtrack is incredible. Of course, uh, amazing as well. Listening and you, to it on the way here. And if you go, and now, like, right. <laughs> we were you both said, at the stop. Yeah. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm at the stoplight, like, and I be turning it down, because I'm like, right. I don't want nobody to think I'm a square. I'm listening I'm listening to the hey, Hamilton soundtrack. You run past me, you might hear some Hamilton. <laughs> now, nah, man. If you go on Apple Music, there is literally, I want to get it right. So there are, I guess they have it broken down to X. But I got, there's a 23... And then there is 23 more. So yeah, they have 46, 46 mm-hmm. tracks total, which is the whole the whole production. And, you know, and I'm not talking about, I mean, some of them are short, but some of these are like four or five minute songs. I mean, yeah. these are really well done. And they got dancing and all this stuff in it. I'm going to ask a hard question to begin with, guys. But what is your favorite song from Hamilton? So, okay. I have three different answers <laughs> because <laughs> because I've experienced it three different ways. There's yeah. the soundtrack, mm-hmm. there's seeing it live, yeah. and then there's the film. I'm, yeah. So is are, uh, do I have to pick one from each, or it, which one are we talking about? Well, you kind of lead me into another thing because it, it I'll put it like this. Listening to it on a soundtrack and then watching it, at least for me, it was totally different. It was different. Totally yeah. different. So yeah. go ahead. Go ahead and do so, your... So I have three. Okay. So when I listen to the soundtrack, probably my favorite song is um, Say No to This. Yeah. I love... I think it's a very underrated song. People talk about all the other songs. I love that song. Yeah. I love... I, d- just with Jasmine and uh, Lynn singing together, mm-hmm. and then they take it up. They go from that D to the D flat, or the E flat, rather. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is great. Yeah. I li- Literally, whenever I'm listening, I'll listen to it while I'm working. And that song comes on, and I, I'll stop what I'm doing, and I'll wait for that for that key change. So to me, that's one. That's probably my favorite one on the soundtrack. On the film, it's One Last Time. Okay. Christopher Jackson, who plays... Isn't it incredible? Oh my God, that's my favorite. See? Yeah. See? Because <laughs> it really... His voice is so like, smooth. And it's yeah. so strong. And, and also, he, Christopher Jackson, to me, is probably the best... Um, actor on the cast to me. He mm-hmm. just, and I think that's because he got other acting experience, mm-hmm. but he leaves it, if you go and watch One Last Time on the Hamilton film, he leaves it all on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I'm like, man, you could have thought like this, man, this was the last time he was ever going to be on <laughs> right. per, on the on the, on the, on the, um, on the stage. And then uh, the last one in person, I think it would be when I saw it in person a couple years ago, it would have been Satisfied. So satisfied okay. seeing that's a the, nice little okay. You got a whole seeing the um it was with the choreography and the song and how it lines up with helpless, which is the song right before it, and how it just shows a different perspective. So those are when you sent me that question, I was like, man, yeah, I, I, I got be... different answers for each one, but it's those forty six songs. My, it's so, yeah. so yeah, it's hard to pick. All of them are good, but yeah. those are probably my top ones. Okay, Crystal. Oh, man, that's good. I would say watching it on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. I never, I That's always good. overlook that song, but watching it, just seeing, it's between, they're talking to, was it, Lynn's talking to Philip, mm-hmm. and then Leslie's talking to his daughter, Theodosia, mm-hmm. I just think it's beautiful, the way, and then he like, he does this thing that I didn't notice until I watched Disney Plus, he, he like bends down, he prays, mm. and then I was watching, yeah, he did, yeah. That's right. an interview, and he says, he used that t- time, he was like, what was I supposed to do when the light went dim on me, he's like, I'm praying. And he didn't have a daughter at the time, so he was doing prayers for his future child. Oh, you know? wow. So I'm like, this is beautiful. And it's, I just feel like, feel like it's an overlooked song. Mm-hmm. But then watching it in person on Broadway, I would say it's Quiet Uptown. That, oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good that's one. My, that yeah. was my second one. It gets me. Okay. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. So, wait, so did you actually go to Broadway? No, I went oh. to, to the, the theater outside Broadway, and I like tried getting tickets, but um, it was like, it's fast. I'm it sure. Too. Yeah. It was fast. Unless you wanted nosebleeds, and I'm like, I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna go, right. I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. right, right. But yeah. I saw it twice at the Smith Center. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So for me, I I don't know if this again. Now you guys have been deep in it for a while. I'm just getting into it. But I love the room where it happens. I That's just a really good song. I love that groove. It is uh, really good. And of course, we're about, we're gonna get into Leslie Odom. We're gonna get all that. I mean, he, it's just. 
it, I mean, in so many of these songs, it's hard to pick. Yeah. Um, I kind of liked, though, the the acting with Washington on your side. I kind of liked just the way they kind of acted it out with David and, you know, yeah. the way he he kind of approaches them and they're, they're kind of talking it out. And it it's so apropos at, the, at that point of the yeah. play as well. It's, there's so many of them. I also do. I loved. Um, I, mean, I got to get his name right here. Uh, I don't want to. Oh man, the the king. Um, oh, Jonathan. Jonathan Groff. Groff. Jonathan Groff. <laughs> Anything he did, I was, he just was digging. hilarious. Man, he was so good. Uh, you know what comes next and yeah. all of that. Um, but it, it's hard to just say one because this is yeah. these songs are just unbelievable. So, and I probably should let me actually. For those who don't know, again, because we're talking like we know, but if you don't know, Lin Manuel Miranda actually plays Alexander Hamilton. Okay, uh, Leslie Odom Jr. plays Aaron Burr, and then there's um, a cast of others. Uh, Philippe so- Philip- Philippa Sue mm-hmm. is Eliza Hamilton. Uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry is Angela Angelica Sh- Schuler. I'm butchering Skyler. them. Skyler. I'm mm-hmm. butchering them. Jonathan Groff is King George. Chris Jackson plays George Washington. Yep. Uh, Jasmine Cephas is Peggy Schuler. Um, Anthony Ramos, I've, I've seen him in something else. I couldn't remember what I've seen him in. It was, was driving the, me nuts. In the Heights, and then he was in something else. Uh, he, he, it was, oh, I couldn't I put remember. my finger on it. Um, he's he's uh, John Lawrence. I'm going to just call him uh, Ocarelletti. Is oh, Hercules uh, Mulligan. Hercules. Uh, he goes by Oak. Yeah. Oak, right, go right. Goes Oak. by Oak. Um, and then there, there's a lot, so many others. Um, David Diggs, of course, Thomas Jefferson. No. Now, I'm going to jump ahead of the one thing that, <laughs> and probably because I didn't see it and did not have a playbill, the only thing I did not like is that, and I guess I shouldn't even say I didn't like it. I just didn't understand what's going on. I didn't know they were playing multiple characters. Oh. So that yeah, totally yeah, threw me off yeah. because, you know, um, like David plays uh the fr- uh Lafayette Lafayette mm-hmm. and then Thomas Jefferson so there's a scene when Le- when David comes back yeah and I remember if you watch it everybody cheers and I said I th- <laughs> we already saw him ghost or is this <laughs> who is this guy yeah and now he's got, he doesn't have an accent no more yeah and so I was but with a playbill you would have seen and I didn't I'm look at any guy. of the credit stuff that's uh, and, uh, for a few people because even um uh I just uh even uh Anthony Ramos he played mm-hmm. uh, John Lawrence, but he also played the son yeah, of uh, Philip Hamilton. Uh, Philip Hamilton as yeah. well. It was a couple of things like that, so I was just kind of lost. And I, also, one thing, and you guys might laugh at this as well. <laughs> I did. I didn't even know. I knew. I knew nothing. I just knew Lin Manuel, man, Lin Manuel Miranda. I did not know it was like such a multicultural cast. Oh yeah. So I kept seeing kind of like even when I saw Leslie Odom, I didn't even know. So I was just like, but. I think Aaron Burr is white, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so I had no, I was like, well, it's a lot of, are they, I just thought they were bit pieces of the thing. I had no yeah. idea until, I said, oh, they're, they're just letting them be these people. Yeah, I said, yeah. okay. <laughs> but, which leads me to another question I want to ask you guys. What, how did it feel to see such a multicultural cast in this play, literally playing people that, you know, historically were probably Caucasian? It was uh it was actually really interesting and that's really what drew me to Hamilton was like it was very like a multicultural cast mm-hmm. so um even though like you know I heard a little bit about Hamilton in the past and I was like okay it's about the founding fathers um that's honestly something that drew me to it and it's something I want why I wanted to support it because yeah. you have all these uh black and other underrepresented um uh, actors and even Lin Manuel, who's uh, I think he's Puerto Rican, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I really wanted to hear here. You know, traditionally you think of Broadway and you think of it's mostly like affluent white community, mm-hmm. mostly people who are white are ones writing it and getting a lot of the credit. And here you see a a cast um, and a play production that was really put on by majority underrepresented. Uh, individual, so that's really what thing that drew me to it, uh, and why I really love, still love supporting it and listening to it. And yeah. the time I'm listening to Hamilton, I'm like, all right, there's some royalty checks from my boy, <laughs> from my right. boy Lin Manuel. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's one thing that actually drew me to the play. How about you? I like that it's it's about America's history portrayed by people of today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. good. I think that's what it is. I I think anyone in the audience can see themselves, you know, being played. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's a beautiful thing. You don't you you don't get that in the sound of music. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 Amazing, amazing <laughs> musical musicals that we love and we talk yeah. about, but a lot of them don't have multicultural cast. You get that one token mm-hmm. minority mm-hmm. person, and it's just it's frustrating. But then seeing how Lynn did this, as well as like in the Heights, I'm excited for it. I get yeah. to see people that look like me for once, people that relate to me actors and just seeing that i think that's a beautiful thing and i think yeah, a lot of kids need to see that you see yourself being represented because represent, representation matters or that's the whole point yeah once i you know figured out what was going on it was so refreshing and like you said i the little bit of ones that i've seen you know they're usually playing characters from books or historical things so they mm-hmm. try to adhere to that and for this to go that way and then you you kind of it's like, yeah, what's the big deal? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, go ahead. You know yeah. what I mean? We all understand. It's, it's and they were excellent and they and they all they all just did such a great job. So, next question I want to ask you guys, who is your favorite character <laughs> from this production? Who is your favorite? Man. Who is your favorite character? That's a good one. I would say it's for me, it's probably uh George Washington played by Christopher Jackson. I yeah. love Christopher Jackson just did a, a tangible job in this whole production. He's very, he's very like, good. When he first comes on, and even when we saw it in Vegas, the guy who played, like I was talking to you, but I was like, but George Washington, he just did a great, I was just like so enamored. And he's, it wasn't even Christopher Jackson. It was no, it wasn't. It was a different actor. Before. And so I think it was a, I think it was an Asian American guy. Asian American guy. Wow. And he killed it. And he killed it. He killed, and I was like, this he guy. He had the same demeanor. He did. Guy, like, yeah, upset and just very yeah. serious, but like yeah. still like I was still drawn to his character. So for me, even on the film, um, the film, seeing it in person mm-hmm. on the soundtrack, I think Christopher Jackson is my guy, George Washington. It wasn't a prominent guy. Like when you think of Hamilton, you think of probably, you know, Hamilton, obviously uh, Eliza, yeah. Aaron Burr, you know, Davy Diggs as mm-hmm. uh, Thomas Jefferson. But to me, I was like, George, the fact that he still stood out and he wasn't really as prominent of a of a character in the play, that's why he's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Okay, Chris. Oh, I'm gonna be a little basic. I'm gonna go with Leslie. Uh, yeah. He, he no. I mean, he, he did great. Tony. That's right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's a good good choice. You know. And his just his voice, the yeah. way he portrays himself as mm-hmm. Aaron Burr, the way he raps, the way he sings, mm-hmm. his vocals. The way he hits those notes, you're like, yeah. it's, it's, it's so effortless the yeah. way he does it too. I'm like, he was just like natural up there. Like All the, the dance choreography, the choreography, it was great. Yeah, He's yeah. So natural up there. I'm going to actually, uh, it's funny, we're going to have three different choices. I'm actually going with David Diggs as yeah, Thomas Jefferson. I mean, he. he was great. He kind of has a swag about him, yeah. you know, <laughs> where. <laughs> It's like, it, it, I mean, he's a great actor, you know, but he's, yeah. it's almost like he's he's almost too cool for school a yeah, little bit, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I just, once again, once I realized, okay, he's playing a different guy, mm-hmm. and he's not my fan anymore. <laughs> I got, that's why I had to watch it again, and I appreciated it. And I said, man, I mean, and it's no slight, because Leslie yeah. is... And what you say about Chris... Um, he, as, as, as George Washington, he has this strength. Yeah. Just this gravitas throughout the whole thing because you know you kind of get the the theory at least in the play you know, Hamilton's kind of all over the place and yeah. he wants to do this I don't want to do that yeah, and yeah. there's the and George Washington is kind of this solid you know like, yeah. which I would like to also ask them because you guys have now seen it with the original cast and then seen a production with the different parts mm-hmm. do they all now you said the guy that played George Washington in the the live version you saw yeah. did it just as well did everybody translate as well from when you saw it, you know, the with Lin Manuel in the original cast to the new cast? I think so. At least in the in the Philip tour that we saw when it was here a couple years ago, um, I'm 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 gonna say something that may be contra- Well, it's honestly not that controversial because a lot of people agree. <laughs> I think the guy who played uh, Hamilton on the Philip tour did a better job than Lynn. Oh wow! And so, and, who, that, and who I'm is not, that? I'm not alone on this. There who, are a lot who, of people. Who is that? Uh, I, oh, I have is his last name Gonzalez? I think, oh, or I um, yeah, I he did an excellent job. Yeah, and Joseph Morales. Morales, that's right. Joseph Forgive Morales. me, Joseph he Morales. Did a good job. He did an 
excellent job. And mind you, when I saw Hamilton, I saw it in person, and I didn't listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, I had I kind of went into it a little bit blind, which I like to do when I go to some Broadway shows, just to get a real pure experience. Yeah, and I was like, man, this guy is great. And then I was listening to the soundtrack, and I was like, this isn't the same. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Where's I like the guy? the guy. I like where's the guy who is doing it at the Smith Center? But I think <laughs> everyone else did. It translated really well. Um, they really have a very good, talented uh, crew. The, everything from the casting, the understudies, uh-huh. everyone did an excellent job. So I think it did translate well. Did you feel the same? Or? Yeah, I felt similar to Kayla. I love Lynn. I love him, <laughs> love him well. But yeah, that Joseph Morales guy who played him, he did a phenomenal job. Excellent. I saw, so I also saw Hamilton the second time at the Smith Center, because why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you're obsessed with Broadway. Um, <laughs> But it was a, it was the understudy, and his uh-huh. name was Julius Thomas. He, oh, yeah. And so you saw three. You've seen three different yeah. iterations. Yeah. So it was. So you have Lin Manuel, Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. You have Joseph Morales. I don't know if he's Puerto Rican, but maybe some type of other Hispanic. Mm-hmm. And then I saw Julius Thomas, who would, who identified as black. And I was like, just having these three different gentlemen play of different ethnicities play yep. this role. Yeah. I was like, this is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that okay. See, that's amazing. And and I would figure. Lynn, if he's not going to do it, he's going to find some people that are going to... Oh, yeah. He, I mean, yeah. he, this is yeah. his, his baby. Now, it's funny you say that because in doing my research, there is kind of a notion that, you know, of the main characters, it, it sounds terrible to say that, you know, Lynn is not really the best actor. You know, no, it's he's like, not. He is, I would be the first to say really, he's yeah. a terrible actor. And this sounds oh so bad to say because let me tell you, Lynn manuel Miranda wrote all of this. He's yeah. done the music. So... Bro, you don't need to be the best actor. You wrote all of it. <laughs> yeah, he you, did. You, you, you're you a great composer. You great. The lyrics are you great. You made this happen. You you did this, <laughs> but I didn't want to say it. But it was like I would just read stuff, and people were like, "Yeah, Lynn's really not that good." I was like, "Man, wow!" You know. And when I watched it, you know, I have not had to be able to compare him to anybody. But I was like, you know, he's fine. I was like, he's he wouldn't if if I had rank him. You know, I said I love David. I feel like. Leslie is just yeah he did incredible. I mean, like I said, my personal favorite is David, but probably the best performance is probably Leslie. And again, like yeah. said, he did win the Tony. Yeah. We're going to get into the awards in a minute, but um, it, it's funny because I was just like, yeah, Lynn's he's fine. I was like, I'm, somebody else probably could, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which sounds terrible to say, but <laughs> it's just it's it's the point. It's just the acting is that good. Yeah. It's such it's a high, high level, a high nice level. level, and. Um, they they just they just really knocked it out of the park. So then let's let's transition to this. Then you know you guys. I know my dad would agree with you. I Did he? <laughs> yeah. My dad's like, I can't watch that Hamilton on Disney Plus because of Lynn. I, wow. He, I think he's a I think he's a great artist. Yes. He did a great job making this, but maybe just. Have someone else be the star. Of your like, life. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't say I didn't know it was that. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Hundred percent. My dad went to high, I went to high school with a guy that looks like Lin Manuel. So every time I see him, he's like, reminds me of this guy Adrian. I went to high school. With. <laughs> <laughs> it's, shout out Adrian. Okay, cool, cool. But um, and it's funny though because you know reading the background of it, they said that I guess you know Lin's been on Broadway, Broadway for a while. He was mm-hmm. in a production called In the Heights. Yep. And then he actually read a biography of Alexander Hamilton and got inspired. And this was in 04, um, which just, oh, no, I'm sorry. The biography was was 2004. And um, he said, Mal, you know, this should maybe, like, we could maybe do something about this. And he had found out that no one had done anything about Hamilton since 1917. This is, of course, according to Wikipedia. And he kind of got... Um, he started a title, working title with it in 2009 is when he started really. And yeah. to think that from 09 to when it finally, in 2016, you know, yeah. a lot of years of really uh, working with this mm-hmm. and, and putting it together. So it's it's a it's an undertaking that, and again, I was about to say, you guys know more, but I have never seen anything like that. I've seen musicals and, you know, there's a musical number and we dance and then we get back to some dialogue, but... To be, what is it, 90%? It's literally just, you know, I mean, straight it, through. I don't think, yeah, it pretty much. I think on the, you know, I had forgotten when we see it in person, you see a little bit more dialogue and you see it on the on the, on the the film. But, you know, listening to the soundtrack, I forgot about that little, you had that one little dialogue between 
Um, I think it was like Theodosia right. and um, what's the last song um, uh, of the first act? I forget it. Uh, it's right. I think it was like right after yeah, Theodosia. Yeah, it's, right in, it's in between. Nonstop. It. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah. And so you had that one when um, you know he gets the letter from John Lawrence's dad, and he's like, he died, and I was like, it caught me off guard because I forgot because yeah. when you listen to the soundtrack, it literally just flows through. Oh, okay. And really, yeah. there's really hardly any dialogue between those songs it it's pretty much just a continuous flow so maybe we've answered my next question well was there anything you didn't like <laughs> maybe it was lynn i don't know <laughs> oh, no. I mean, again shout out lynn, we love you, lynn. come we love on you, anytime lynn. man Please. come through anytime but is there anything else or anything that you kind of just were not crazy about you know uh that you'd be like man i might have tweaked this or anything I think the one thing that it really wasn't something I didn't like, but something I noticed on the film is, and maybe it's just because, you know, I do some video editing, but there are a couple video edit, like differences that I meant that I saw. Now I think they, they videotaped the, the, the Hamilton film on four different. So like they had like one time it was like more like close ups. Uh -huh. uh, other times it was like more using the crane. Other times it was more the wide shot. Um, and so, you know, and then there was one shooting where they did like a variation. So I remember if you go and watch Satisfied, right, when they do, especially when they do the rewind part, you'll see like uh, Angelica in some shots, she has like this flower on her dress. And then if you go and then on other shots, she doesn't. Oh. And so I think what they were doing is on, I think it was just probably just an overlook is they, uh, she probably wore a flower on one of those shootings and to get some of that, uh, because in, in Satisfied, it's a lot of, you got that revolving stage. They're yeah. really using that stage and a that lot of choreography. Crazy, yeah. And to really capture it, they're switching shots. And so they're going between, I think, different production nights. So that's one thing I just picked up that I was like, oh, okay. But, I mean, they did such a good job with the shots. I don't think a lot of people noticed it. I didn't even notice it at first. I saw a little, like, article on it, and I was like, What? It was like it, like editing mistakes, and I was like, "Oh, I want to see like what yeah, I missed." Yeah, yeah. And so that's probably the only thing I didn't like. Um, I wouldn't even say didn't like, but just something I noticed that I was like, "Oh, okay." But it, it like again, like I said again, satisfied is just so good to really capture it. Mm -hmm. You really had to like play around with the shots, and I, I don't think a lot of people noticed it. Yeah, I didn't. I definitely noticed right? that. Yeah, they go. Yeah. They they basically do helpless, helpless which is like Eliza in Hamilton meeting, and then. They move on, and then they do from Angelica. Angelica's like, "All right, we're, let's back this up real quick, and then let's talk about like from my perspective." But I think uh, they did a really good job with it. But this is something I noticed. I don't think I have anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I can't even. That's the, the most criticism I can give. No, yeah, that's yeah. that's understandable because, like, like I said, I was again with a play bill. I'd have been fine. I was just a little confused starting mm -hmm. out, but once I got, you know, I'm the type of guy. If you guys have ever seen any of the Cirque du Soleil shows, I sat probably 20 minutes in the car and I didn't realize there was no dialogue. I was like, is anybody going to say <laughs> like, what's going on? And then I realized, oh, oh, is this just performance? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> See, it's like I'm ballet. Like, I'm a little slow sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little slow. So we're kind of answering our next question. We've already answered the next question. Next question is, is this rewatchable or a one-time thing? 100%. And uh, of course, it's, it's literally, I... I didn't just rewatch it to prepare for this. I really wanted to just, I said, because it's just coming at you. And yeah. you're, like you said, there's no slow dialogue mm -hmm. where you just, it is just, and I had never seen anything like this. I said, I need to just go back and, and, and watch this again. Yeah. It is super rewatchable. And you pick up, yeah. you pick up new stuff every time. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. and, and then like, I want to like, like last night I was reading an article about like how the, the, you know, there's one, thought that it's actually being taught or narrated by um, um, Aaron Burr, by oh, Leslie. Yeah. And basically the thought is, well, like Aaron Burr is basically like in this, he's dead, but he's like in this in-between stage, like a purgatory stage. And so he has to like, his punishment is having to retell this story until he figures oh, out where he went wrong. Interesting. And so like that one song, you know, the, the, I think it's the second to last song, The World Was Big Enough for the Both of Us, yeah. where he sings after, you know, spoiler alert, he kills Hamilton. Yeah. Um, 
uh, that's kind of his like, oh, now I can kind of pass over. So yeah. every time I'm watching it, there's a there's um, Ariana Debo who's on, in the ensemble who plays the bullet. She like oh, okay. I read an article about that, and so I watched it last night, and I was just like fixated on where she at. Because she plays like this, um, if, I'll, I'll tell this really quickly. She's kind of like the omen of death. Like when in that first um, King uh, um, King George, you know, at the end you have that British soldier and then that girl gets killed, right? And at first I was like, what is this? Like well, That was kind of random. Yeah. And I thought it was just because like King George was just this crazy guy and he was just killing people. But she plays the omen of death and she's the first character to die in the play. So from then on, oh. she plays the bullet. So in, even in the next scene, when Alexander's sitting, he's reading, you see like the British soldier shoot a gun, and, and she she's comes. she comes and she's that bullet all the way to the end, where she where um, That's interesting. you know she plays the bullet again in that final duel. And so I read that, and it, it it gets really deep. Like she's the first person to talk to Philip in the song where he dies. So like it's wow. it's so much to it. So it, it is definitely rewatchable because you pick up new things every time. And so especially nerds like us, I'm, yeah. I be watch, I be reading stuff, and I'm like I'm about to go rewatch it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So for you, do you, how many? I won't say how many times you watch it, but how many things do you pick up when you rewatch it? Like, do you always still see something you haven't seen before? I think so. Yeah, yeah I focus on different aspects. Especially in Act Two, um, with like Eliza, with like like the fire. I feel, with, yeah. Yeah, that was like a burn. A burn. That's a beautiful moment right there. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And that's just something I never really picked up on because there's so like when you're watching it live, there's so much happening on yes. the stage. Yes. Yeah. So much happening. So with the with the movie, which is nice, I can pause it, stare at it, like okay, rewind it. What happened? Again? <laughs> yeah. So that's nice because you can't do that with actual physical show. Okay, right. stop what you're doing. Let me think about it. Okay, continue. <laughs> yeah, that, that that helped me because I would go back on some things because <clears throat> you know, let let's just let's just put it out there as well. I mean it's his life was a very interesting life, yeah. you know, and there's so many things. If you would have told me, what do you know about Alexander Hamilton before this, I like, you know, founding father, you know, yeah. he's on some money. I didn't know very much about him. But this gives you a lot of information. And, you know, for those who don't mm-hmm. know, I mean, he, from where, it, this starts from him basically coming on the scene and mm-hmm. Aaron Burr and and then how he, he comes up through the politics. And there's so much, it, it, it's a great dichotomy because him and Aaron Burr actually started, I didn't even know they started out they close like that at first. Yeah, they were very they were close. Friends. And then, but you see a fracture with power and, mm-hmm. you know, and then. There, you know, the elections come and, and they're trying to decide. And, and and there's one point. I mean, I'm totally skipping through a lot of things, but there's one point where you, I mean, Leslie Odom so good. You can see Aaron Burr really start to change yeah. and the really mm-hmm. the animosity. And then it gets to a point. God, I'm gonna mess it up. But he, I think he says something to Hamilton like, you know, that kind of thinking or something like that is gonna get or whatever he's doing is gonna get him into trouble. Yeah. Like, something yeah. like that. I can't remember where it is. Talk less, smile talk, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's kind of warning them. And you're just like, wow, this is really, you know. And when I started doing research on it, they talked about how their rivalry got so bitter. Yeah. And so just and of course back in those days, you know, people had duels. <laughs> Dueling. Uh, New Jersey. Everything's legal and, in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when we, when we get to that, and the thing is, I did not know, I you know that his son Aaron Alexander Hamilton's son was killed in a duel in, before him, which was just like, at the wow, same in, in his, the same place. in the same spot with the same guns. And yeah, which yeah. is it is. Um, so I think back when Lin Manuel was reading this. You know, he was maybe like, "Wow, you know, yeah. this guy's life is you know somebody could really." Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so that leads me, of course, to my, my next question for you guys is, and this is a question I'm still even thinking about right now, like, man, <laughs> is there someone that you, because for me, is it, okay, let me just ask my question. Is there someone else that you would like to see have their life portrayed like this through a play or, you know, for Lin-Manuel himself, maybe to, not he isn't acting it, but to kind of write out and do like this? I've been thinking about this. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I could only think of like parallels, like like people who kind of had like Alexander had like such a 
like troubled past. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he had he had some good moments. He had some bad moments. Mm-hmm. Cheating on his wife, the uh, allegations of embezzlement, mm-hmm. um, the dual stuff. So I think when I thought about that, I was thinking of like people who, you know, had similar. So I was thinking of like um, and, and people I wanted to learn more about because I learned a lot about Alexander Hamilton and have become a little bit more of a history nerd of him. So I thought like uh, learning a little bit more about like JFK, mm. uh, I could see that being portrayed. And um, I mean, again, you kind of have like you know, die by by a gunshot like Hamilton did. Yeah. I'm just drawing on parallels. Um, I was also thinking like Abe Lincoln, I think would be a good one. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, and I feel like you could really get into a lot of the history, like behind the Civil War, what was really his role? Because there was a lot of competing thoughts on yeah, his some. position on slavery and, you know, you know, uh, was it really about states' rights for him mm-hmm. versus slavery? Um I thought about this. I don't know if we want to do a play on the on the you know the late and great Martin Luther King Jr. But I thought about it. I was like, <laughs> it, my, if you, it has to be done very, it has to be done right. right don't mess yeah, that one up. Yeah, but yeah. I think that would also be a good one because again, you know, even Doctor Mark, Doctor uh, MLK Jr. He had a lot of trouble, a lot of you know, a, lot of uh, a whole lot of things in his complicated, background. Yeah, right. That's complicated. And I think like these plays do a good job of taking and telling the story of someone who had a complicated. Um, you know, experience, uh, but also was a leader in the United States. So I think those three were three that I could it's think of. That was like, I'd really like to see a play like that. I feel like I could learn a little bit more and you could kind of tell the story in a way where um, it's palatable and people would be able to receive it. And um, I think like we mentioned before with Hamilton, having a multicast like that makes it easier for people yeah. uh, who aren't normally the, you know, the quintessential, you know, Broadway uh, you know, community to really grasp it and learn a lot from it. Yeah. Chris? I was thinking more of like a figure that's not as known. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking Eartha Kitt. Oh, um, wow. I just, I, you know, she started off like being born in a cotton plantation in yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. And then how she like progressed from being moved to New York and mm-hmm. her Broadway, mu- her just her music in general, her acting as Catwoman. Was she yeah. a child of rape? I think she was think born she out was. of rape. I think yeah. I heard that about her story. Yeah, I think because she was so light skinned. I think her like there was issues with her family. I don't yeah. think she really knew who her mom was. She was raised by an aunt and then a yeah. grandma. So yeah, wow. It was just like her life is just so impressive. And then the whole issue where she's an activist too. So she stood her ground about people about young males joining Vietnam. And I think mm-hmm. the CIA was upset with her. The government was yeah. upset with her. So they shunned her. I think that would be like. Act two, what happened? I mean, man, you're making it sound good right now. <laughs> like, yeah. And then she had to go. She was touring in Europe, and she learned French and other mm-hmm. languages, and she toured in Asia. And the 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 fame that she grew overseas, and because America kind of shunned her, I mm-hmm. feel like that's something that could be talked about. Also, and then her her voice acting with cartoons and Disney. Mm-hmm. I think her whole it's like a beautiful like circle life for Eartha Kitt. Yeah. I think she's an amazing person. I would love to watch a musical about yeah. her. That is a great That's pick a good one. as well. That's and, really good one. You know, I was really struggling with this because I think you hit on it. What I love the most is I almost went in basically with a blank slate. I have mm-hmm. nothing, don't know anything about Alexander Hamilton and I learned so much. Yeah. And I'm a history guy, so I love learning history. So, you know, there's people who I like that I was like, you're I love, but I already know a lot about them. Yeah. And so I was, you know, you don't want to just do another, I mean, yeah. founding fathers do it. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about John Hancock. I'm sure maybe he's, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, you know, the great thing with, not the great thing, but, you know, Hamilton, there is some violence. There's a duel. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's a there's a real antagonist with mm-hmm. Aaron Burr or whoever stance you want to take with it. Um, and then I really started thinking, I was like, there's some people in history, history who I don't know, you know, Alexander the Great, yeah. you know, um, Genghis Khan, people mm-hmm. like that to where now that you, because you, you have to imagine as talented as Lynn is, whoever he first presented it to, I'm sure they were like, Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> You want to do a? He has a story. He he yeah. he went to the White House. Oh, and he told he he told Michelle Obama. Oh, really? He was like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm writing this play about Alexander Hamilton, and, and Michelle Obama was like, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> right, yeah. And like now, like, and she was like, 
it blew up and she was like hey i know that guy <laughs> yeah, and so cool. like people when he first approached people were just like oh okay like whatever he was into poetry and like yeah and he performed at the white house with his poetry mm-hmm. people. yeah and then it's like oh i'm gonna come back <laughs> wow <laughs> watch me it's like, okay. that's and then he came back what happened he did and when you just when you see it done on that level and it's like wow well they can do that for hamilton what could they do for another famous figure it, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people but I, I you know if he'd asked me i'd be like man lynn if you could find somebody that again is not obscure but just yeah. people don't know don't yeah. really realize and haven't done a lot of research on because i know for pre- pretty much everybody that was like me you're you love the music you love the performances but you mm-hmm. the learning of it like i didn't yeah. I, I was like man this guy was really an amazing guy and he just he wrote the writer he wrote so much stuff and he was yeah. so ambitious i love that that really and he he stayed true to a lot of the history like and yeah. that's again rewatching it and reading and really studying it you see him throwing in like he he doesn't shy away from like you know thomas jefferson was a slave owner. So, yeah, yes and yes. even something i picked up on like someone who wrote an article about like and i didn't pick it up on it like i watched it last night like uh, uh thomas jefferson walks with a like a like a pimp walk like a limp yeah. And, and it's Lynn manuel saying this guy basically was pimping out people. And that's oh, wow. his way of, like, bringing out. And also there is a, a, a slave that Thomas Jefferson um, had a lot of children with named Sally. Yeah. And Sally if you was. notice in his first song, when he, when he comes back, he's like, Sally, be a dear. Won't you open this letter? And he, oh, he, my gosh. Lynn manuel is it. dropping so many like facts. I didn't facts. Even catch that. He and he's like, he, he, right. he hands it to her, like, Sally be a dear, would you open it? And it, he's basically talking, it's a letter from the president. Exactly. The president. See, that's, that's not you, that's the deep in it's the weeds so, stuff. That's, it's so, like I said, man, I've been, I've been studying this that's since, deep. since wow. I saw it like two years ago. But didn't Hercules Mulligan have a slave that was He had it, he did. Yep, he had a slave that sp- helped spy with him. Um, on the on the British troops in the South, yeah. so uh, it's so many. He keeps he puts a lot of facts in there. Uh, the whole thing about John Lawrence, I didn't know about. You know how he wanted to have his first black all black battalion, oh, yes. um, oh, okay. and how he was how Eliza and Hamilton were. You know, um, you know, spoke out against slavery and things like that. So it was. It, I felt like there were a lot of good facts there in history um, nuggets. That he really kept true to that, and you could tell that Lim was like really, like, uh, like really idolizes Hamilton, and it was why I think he wanted to play him. Yeah, yeah. Because he really, yeah. I, he was a real nerd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, uh, like in real life, Eliza and Thomas Jefferson wrote letters to each other too. Oh yeah, yeah. and I think Angelica did too. There's a lot of yeah. stuff it's going a, on it's there. Very it's it a is. lot. Yes, <laughs> it, the, the Angelica, Eliza, Hamilton triangle, the Thomas Jefferson. I went to Philly last summer, and you see. How close they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Buried. Yeah. Where they're buried. They're very close. Other carriages taking them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's again, so early on again, I remember my first watching of it. I did not understand the Angelica Eliza. I, I was like, are they friends? Or because again, at first yeah. I didn't realize, okay, they got different colored people. Because I so I remember my first. So it totally threw me, like mm-hmm. when she comes back, yeah. she's talking to him. I was like, wait, wait a minute. So on my rewatch, then it made, I said, "Oh, I see." I said, "Wow, they there was a lot of okay." Wow, had, 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 Hamilton has had Hamilton another side was, piece. Yeah, it but wasn't just Mariah Reynolds. Yeah, it was, it was a <laughs> lot of okay. It's 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 a very there's a lot of layers to him, and yeah. so you could see knowing what the knowing what we know now about Lynn, I could imagine him reading this story of Hamilton like, "Oh, wow, mm-hmm. I could really, you know." And then again, to make it in a hip hop style, it's just. It's just incredible. amazing. So, for those who don't know, a little extra, uh, some trivia things. This won 15 uh, Tony Awards, if I'm looking at that I right. Think that's right. Um, of course, just was a few of them will go with one best musical. Of course, uh, lead actor in a musical was Leslie Odom Jr., who is an amazing, uh, he's got an amazing voice. He is a great singer. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm late to the party. He was doing the uh, the Allstate ads, I think. He's on a yeah. commercial. Yeah, Allstate ads. So I remember seeing, and I had no idea he was in Hamilton. He, he's had a couple like one-offs in like right. Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. You and know, I just remember, I was like, oh, the guy's got a nice voice. Okay, mm-hmm. anyway. But I did not realize, you know, I didn't know who he was. But, uh, you know, this guy's got a whole Tony. Um, <laughs> then um, David Diggs won Featured Actor in a Musical. He won the Tony for that. Um, featured Actress, Renee L. 
uh, Elise Goldsberry uh, won that. And then, uh, oh, and uh, we've said all of this. Uh, the director is Thomas Cahill. Cahill, yep. he, Cahill um, who directed this. And so, he, of course, he won Best Director. I mean, they just swept. You can go yeah, through the did. whole thing. Yeah. You know, Best Book of a Musical, Miranda, the choreography, Andy Blagenberg. Uh, orchestration, orchestration, orchestration. I'm struggling talking right now. Alex uh, <laughs> Lassimore, who again, the music is unbelievable. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, costume design. I knew. I was like, whoever did these costumes, did great, killed it. Paul Teswell, uh, lighting, which mm-hmm. we're learning now with the lighting. <laughs> um, Howard Binkley. So there's just down. I feel bad for the other productions that were up against this. Yeah. This was oh. just this year. It was just a juggernaut. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There was one particular one that I'm trying to go see that was. It came out during the same time. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. It came out around the same time, and I was like, I need to go see that because people were talking about how good it was, but it just got over. Uh, it's good, but not as. That you know, it's, yeah. It's like when movies come out, and it's yeah. like you know, there's this one like blockbuster, and this one just kind of goes it's, under yeah. the rug. It's like going against like Titanic or yeah, Force you're not or something. Do you know it. what I mean? You exactly. Just, no way to, <laughs> but um, so we're we're gonna wrap it up, but just a few other things. So, um, I wonder for you guys. How are you adjusting, you know, it's 2020 and all that's been going on. You guys are not really getting your Broadway fix, so to speak. How is that affecting you guys? Because so for me, now I really, I was like, man, I wish I could see this, you know, on, on stage. But I'm just kind of getting my feet wet into it. Mm. You guys do a lot of this. How has it been for you not being able to go and actually see the production, you know? We send each other a lot of crying emojis. Yes, <laughs> we do. Yeah. All the time. It's it's tough. Uh, unfortunately, like, theaters are one of the first things to close. Like, yeah. um, thousands of people in one room. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. mass gathering. So it's hard to really do this, you know, uh, where it's, you know, everyone's socially distanced. The last Broadway we saw was Once on This Island. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was May 12th. It was the day March 12th. March 12th. Yeah. Say May, March 12th. It was the day before who announced global pandemic yeah mm-hmm. so we had no idea no we were, idea we didn't even take it seriously i mean yet. i mean they had like hand sanitizer and i was like yeah all right, right i literally right, just yeah. got back from a trip i was like on the plane and i was like i don't need no mask i'm good that was a- nobody yeah yeah and then like i think they had two more shows after that and then smith center has been closed since wow. so it's been it's been hard but thankfully hamilton's gotten me through yes, um has- disney plus also has a couple others and okay. there's a couple online like uh um, it, it's not done the the same way as Hamilton as far as like filming production. the production. Right. Yeah. But I think uh, Hello Dolly is one of my favorite, bro, probably one of probably top three for me. Um, and they have a video, a movie kind of they made out of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's a musical that I really that's kind of been keeping me. And so I think Les Mis, they also have like a movie on in in the wood into the woods. Mm-hmm. So I've been dabbling um, in a couple. Um, I tried to view. Not everyone does it well. I think Disney Plus has done it well. I've tried to view a couple, and I was yeah. like, "Oh no, this isn't this isn't it." <laughs> but um, the well, because it's just seen, hard because normally plays don't really translate great because yeah. they're made for the stage. They're not made for yeah. You know, so yeah, it's. I think Hamilton's changing the game. They translated pretty well. Yeah, oh man, they did a great job. The way that the they did it. And yeah, and I think. Up. As we were talking, like they're gonna do like, the last one we saw was um, Once on this Island. Island, and I think Disney Plus. She just used to send me the article the other day. Yeah, like they're yeah. doing, um, they're working on doing something similar to Hamilton. So I think Hamilton's kind of laying the groundwork. Yeah, like having multiple cameras. Yeah. Exactly. Usually it's like three cameras on the stage, and it's like kind of blurry. Yeah, so you got yeah. like that one big wide shot, and I'm like, uh, but this one, you like, like Newsies on Disney Plus, kind of has like the Hamilton. Vibe yeah. With like mm-hmm. the different camera angles. Mm-hmm. So I think Newsies is kind of close. And that was filmed, I think, five years ago? Yeah. In 2015. Wow. But yeah. But another way of getting my Broadway fix is there's this, I think it's it's like an app or a streaming. It's called Broadway HD. And they have like a bunch of Broadways, like Oklahoma, mm-hmm. Cinderella. Sound of Music. Sound of Music. So yep. Yeah. And then also um, live television, like where they have like, they did Hairspray Live, go, um, Brent. Uh, um, like yep. the, the Wiz, like mm-hmm. they have all that stuff on TV, so I've been wa- re-watching those. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> to get a little bit of yeah. during this time, so that's been nice. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, because it's funny, I think, <clears throat> it's been a few years, but the last time I was at Smith Center, I saw Dirty Dancing, 
And again, it just was different from seeing. I know the movie. Everybody yeah. remembers the movie, but to watch it, I was like, wow, it was such a different experience. And it's, you know, it's hard to just not have that live experience with a lot of things, you know, sports, everything. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, we um, yeah, hopefully hoping things will at some point get back to. But as you guys can see, these two, I want them to do their own podcast because <laughs> we need to add them on the network. We've been talking they, about it. They know so much <laughs> about these Broadway plays. And I've, I mean, I've never gone to a production and not liked it. I mean, it is it's just something about seeing it live and. These people are such good actors and singers and dancers, and it's just, you know, different. You know, they're not doing a hundred takes like on a movie. Yeah. They gotta, you gotta nail it, and you know, keep it moving. So, hopefully, you guys check it out. And if you were a skeptic like me, I, I'm promising you, it is going to be it's worth, worth it. Watch. It is. You have not seen anything like this. I'm telling out you, three hours. If you're, you're gonna yeah, sit through it's, it. There's an intermission. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna need a little time, but. You will if if you'll be like oh you know plays are okay I'm telling you it's nothing like yeah. what you've seen before so check this out so I want to thank you guys for coming on to Caleb of course for you know first kind of uh, letting me know I, he, you told me once you're like you know yeah we, we checking out you know plays and stuff I was like okay I was like all right this yeah. is way back <laughs> that was a while ago yeah you know I was like I'll uh, I'll remember that you know now we'll see you know and uh, but then everything that happened happened and then it happened yeah. I was like well let me let's get these guys get these guys on of course and Crystal thank you for coming on the show as well Tiff we miss you we wish you were here um, we'll have to I, you know now quiet is kept this might not be the only Hamilton show on this one because there's some people that wanted to come on that I was like man you know we kind of packed you know we're going to get like four in the studio so they might we might do another one because um, I want to watch it a few more times I need yeah. to see some of these extra things so we might get into this again but you know let us know how you like this one you know maybe i can encourage these guys to start you know hollering at the theater community we can get a whole nother show going as yeah. well with some of these but um it's been fun thank you so much check us out of course mighty sharp uh networks we got a whole bunch of different shows and shareholders podcasts and all that stuff but um looked for looking for and if you got disney plus there's no reason not to watch just, it. You, just, you might as well. We all sitting at home. <laughs> just you know? check it out. No excuse. <laughs> no excuse. All right. Thank you guys for coming on. You guys stay with us. Stay sharp. This has been a production of the Mighty Sharp Network. Executive producer is Monty Mont. Watch the corners and always stay sharp. Put on your armor. It's war time. It's time to fight for the Lord. And when this battle 